Hey, good afternoon, good morning. So let's explain to you everything you need to know about drops before and after cataract surgery. So when you get cataract surgery, there's gonna be four main drops that you're gonna need. And I'm also gonna to explain to you what dropless cataract surgery is. But first, let's talk about the three main drops that you need and the one other drop that the surgeon might not tell you about. All right, and just a little disclaimer, Every surgeon is gonna have their own protocol. So I'm gonna go over the main drops that you could use, what they're used for, and the typical dosing and frequency that you could be using. But your surgeon may have a specific regime or protocol that they're gonna ask you to do. Whatever your surgeon tells you to do, I would follow those instructions because they have a set system that works well to, to give them and you the best success. So the first drop that you're gonna be prescribed is an antibiotic eye drop. And antibiotics are used to treat and prevent eye infections. And infections after an eye surgery are one of the most feared things that a surgeon has. And the end result can be something called end ophthalmitis, which is absolutely catastrophic and we want to avoid that at all costs. So your doctor is going to definitely prescribe you some antibiotics to use after the cataract surgery, but sometimes they will actually have you start the antibiotic drops one to three days before you have cataract surgery. Now, typically the surgeon is going to prescribe an antibiotic in the category of a fluoroquinolone. Those are the most advanced and the best antibiotics we have for treating and preventing infections. Now, there is a bunch of different specific drugs that you could use in the category of fluoroquinolones, but many of them will end X-O-C-I-N. So if you see that in the name of the drug, it's likely that that is your antibiotic. Now, typically the surgeons are gonna have you use this drop probably three to four times a day. And after the surgery, you're gonna use your antibiotics for at least one week, but you may use it more if they instruct you to do so. And typically you might wanna start treating your blepharitis about a month before you have your surgery. Now, there are other things that you can do to reduce the risk of getting infections after surgery. And the main one is treating your blepharitis. And I've got a whole nother video about blepharitis up here that you can watch. But what you wanna do is if you can prevent blepharitis, then you can reduce maybe some of the risk of developing an eye infection after the surgery. And the way you're gonna do that, it was some type of lid wipe. And specifically, you might wanna look at treating Demodex blepharitis. Typically, you might want to start treating your blepharitis about a month before you have your surgery, and not only will that help reduce your likelihood of having an infection, but it may actually help some of the dry eye that you might be having before or after the surgery, and that's going to make a better outcome for you as well. Now, the second drop you're going to be prescribed is a steroid drop. Before we do that, I wanted to say, hey, thanks so much for getting this far in the video and watching this. And I'd like to ask you a little favor. If vision is important to you and you like hearing topics like this where I make eye care simple, then please do me a favor, hit the subscribe button and the like button down below because that really tells YouTube that this video is valuable and they should send it out to other people. But now a steroid is gonna be used to reduce inflammation after cataract surgery. Now, Inflammation is a normal response that our body produces when part of the body is injured. Either it's cut or poked or injured or, or bruised, you're going to develop inflammation. And inflammation is a way of the body telling you, hey, there's a problem right here. You should probably look into seeing if you need to deal with that and get rid of that. Now, inflammation can also sometimes be uh, an emergency response that the body produces to help heal a tissue. Now, inflammation can be useful in some circumstances in repairing an injury, but in other circumstances, it may not be a good thing. And when you have a controlled you know, injury like surgery, where you are actually in a sterile environment and you're making an intentional incision and you're doing an intentional procedure on the body, then we know that the body's gonna heal itself with the aid of the antibiotics and other things. And so the inflammation may not be a good thing. And what the inflammation will do is it'll it may cause a little bit delayed healing. It may cause some pain and discomfort that the patient might have after the surgery. And so when you have cataract surgery, we want to reduce 
the amount of inflammatory response that the body produces after the cataract surgery, and that's going to be a good thing for you. So one of the main things that you use to do this is a steroid, and a steroid will quiet down that inflammation to allow that eye to heal a little bit faster. So the inflammation is what causes some pain. It also causes you to have sensitivity to light. The surgeons will often prescribe a steroid eye drop, for sure for the first week. And so some surgeons will have you stop the steroids completely after the first week, but others might have a taper of the steroid where you reduce the amount of the steroid slowly at, over the next few weeks after the cataract surgery. And some of the common steroids that you'd use is prednisolone or dexamethasone or lodopredinol. But typically you can look at the name of the drop and if it ends in L-O-N-E or S-O-N-E or N-O-L, likely this is probably the steroid that you're gonna be using. Now, one of the important things that you need to be aware of if you're on a steroid, steroids reduce your pain and discomfort and some of the inflammation. And so they actually cover up some of the symptoms that something more seriously might be going wrong. In addition to that, steroids can also cause an increased eye pressure in some individuals. And that's why your surgeon's gonna recommend you follow up with either your optometrist or the surgeon after the surgery to watch for these things that might be happening if you're on a steroid drop. And now the third drop that you're gonna be on is something called an NSAID, and it stands for a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drop. Now this is another drop that reduces the inflammation in the eye after the surgery, just like a steroid does, but it does it for a different purpose and in a little bit different way. Now, a lot of you have been on an NSAID. That's what Advil is, that's what Motrin is, that's what Aleve is, and these are all designed to reduce pain and inflammation. Now, when we're using them for cataract surgery, one of the main things that the NSAID is gonna do, in addition to helping with some of the pain and the inflammation, is reduce the risk of a complication called cystoid macular edema, also referred to as CME, and that's a swelling of the retina at the back of the eye, what happens in a small percentage of people after cataract surgery. Now, I've got a video about CME that you can watch. I'll put it down in the description because that's one of the complications that can happen after cataract surgery. But your surgeon is going to put you on an NSAID definitely after the surgery, usually three to four times a day for a week. But sometimes they will actually have you start that NSAID prior to surgery, maybe one to three days before surgery. So you may start it before, you may just start it after, and then you could use it for sure for a week, but sometimes some of the surgeons will have you keep using the NSAID eye drop a little bit longer than a week after the cataract surgery. Now to know which one's the NSAID eye drop, oftenly, oftentimes it's gonna end with an LAC or an NAC, and if it has that, then that's likely the NSAID eye drop. Okay, so I'm gonna get into the fourth eye drop that you should be using, but first, if you've been counting, that's three drops that you need to be using up to four times a day, that's 12 drops a day. That's a lot of eye drops. You're gonna be doing that for at least a week after the cataract surgery. That can be a, sometimes a lot. Sometimes it's easy to forget what you're doing and it becomes cumbersome. So some of the surgeons will prescribe a combination eye drop. So they can take those three medications, the antibiotic, the steroid, and the NSAID, uh, eye drop and they can combine them into one bottle as a combo drop and then you can just have to take that three to four times a day as one drop rather than taking each drop separately. So your surgeon may prescribe just one bottle and if they do that might be what they're doing. Okay. Now if the surgeon wants something even easier sometimes they will do what they call dropless cataract surgery. And what dropless cataract surgery means is that you don't have to actually use any eye drops after the cataract surgery. And the way they do that is that during the surgical procedure, they inject into the eye these medications, the antibiotic, the steroid, the NSAID, into the eye so that they're there and they're kind of time released to help reduce that risk of problems after the surgery. And in that way, you don't have to use eye drops after the surgery. So not every surgeon does that, but if they talk about a dropless cataract surgery, or if you refer to as a dropless cataract surgery, that's what they're doing. And the intent is to make it a little bit easier for you after the cataract surgery. Okay, so the, the fourth drop that you should be using after cataract surgery, but sometimes the surgeons may or may not suggest you using this, is some form of lubricating drop. So a lubricating drop is a really great drop to reduce some of the irritation and discomfort you might be having, as well as treating some of the dryness that is very, very common after cataract surgery. In addition to that, it can also help give you a little bit clearer vision after the surgery because it helps improve the tear film quality. 
Now, if you're going to use a lubricating drop, there's a lot of different ones out there, but what you want to do is make sure it's a preservative-free lubricating eye drop, and I would definitely recommend that you start with a new bottle. Don't use a previous one, because in case that one's contaminated and it, you don't want to increase the risk of developing some type of infection. And you can use a lubricating drop as often as you want after the cataract surgery. It's a common symptom that people have a little bit of grittiness or a little scratchy feeling. The lubricating is going to help with that. It might have a little bit of fluctuating and blurred vision. The lubricating drop is going to help with that. You might also have some stinging from the active ingredients and the preservatives in the other prescription drops that you're using. And treating your dry eye can help reduce that burning and stinging that you're experiencing when you're putting those other drops in. Now, the one thing, you, if you are using a lubricating drops, you want to wait at least five minutes prior to or after putting the other drops in. And I would probably recommend putting the lubricating in drops after the other drops, but you want to wait at least five minutes because you want, don't want to dilute down those other eye drops to reduce those effectively. So the one drop you definitely don't want to use after cataract surgery is any of the anti redness type of eye drop. It could be tempting because your eye might be a little bit red from the surgery and you might be wanting to get clear that up and you might be tempted to use these anti-redness drops. But these anti-redness drops, they can actually contribute to some of the dryness and cover up some of the symptoms that might happen indicating a serious problem. So definitely don't use any of the anti-redness drops after your cataract surgery. Now there's a lot of frequently asked questions about eye drops after cataract surgery and if you want to hear what those are you need to watch this video right here. And if you want to learn about how to put eye drops properly in your eye then you might want to watch this video right here. And with that have a great optometry 